This is Gangrel, the Vampire Warrior, and you're fanging a bang with Monty and the Pharaoh. <laughs>
There's only a few guys. The money wasn't there. Well, the money, yeah. Let me, let me ask you. Arnold, you, did yeah. Franco Colombo. But then, really, Arnold what? during right. that era was really the did only you, one. Did you right. hear the horror stories about a pro you know, pro bodybuilder? Like, oh, I heard a lot of horror so stories. So all the stuff you have to do to make money oh, on the side? Oh, yeah. I, can't, I, I did all my competing. All the top shows that I won was in Florida. Mm. But unfortunately, in the Florida market, the guys who were the judges, I even know his name. I won't mention his name over the line. Well, yeah, I will. Go Peter Potter. Right. Peter Potter is the one who's still running the bodybuilding down there. I understand all these guys. Most of them are again, gay guys. Yeah. They're in the industry. And the favors that you have to do behind Oy. the scenes. Mm -hmm. So that's not me. Welcome so. to Ben Dover's pushing your stool. Well, exactly. Ever, well, were you ever approached to do anything <laughs> like that? Uh, you know, I've heard, I've heard horror stories of guys that go to hotel rooms, they sit there and pose while a guy may masturbate in front of them, right? Exactly. That's exactly what they do. And that's some of the things, and they even want to do even more than that. Did yeah. you carry a tomahawk around 24-7? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, you, you definitely need a tomahawk with guys like that around. Chopping you off pee-pee. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah. that's, I, I, I weighed all of that at the time, looking at everything that was involved. I go, uh, I don't think this Harder is it. Harder to be a bodybuilder than a professional wrestler? As far as scheduled taxing on your time? No. No, no, no. no. Okay. Because okay. here's the reason why. With War Wrestling Federation, when I started, we were actually booked officially, my first seven years, 300 days a year. Ooh. But even more than Man. that, on weekends, on a Saturday, we would do a one o'clock show. Double, huh? And then we'd do an eight o'clock show. Wow. They don't do that anymore. No. And all these kids today going, oh, it's so tough. Right. Four days yeah. on, three days on. Do you watch the product? Four day, uh, yes. You I'm do? On, yeah, I'm on contract you with them. You still watch the product. Well, nice. it's changed a lot. Yeah. Of course oh, sure. it's changed a lot. Sure. But I still watch it. But the, the travel schedule, like Hogan, Hogan said it was 90 days on one tour before he got home for one mm -hmm. day. I've been on the road 60 days before getting home. Wow. And having that one day on. Right. Wow. Him, 90 days. So not only that, the reason I say it's tougher, not only are you wrestling, not only are you traveling, <laughs> meaning flying in, mm -hmm. got to go get your rent a car, mm -hmm. got to go get your hotel, then you got to go from the hotel, now you got to go get a bite to eat, now you got to go to the gym, yep. go work out, so you're still competing, meaning bodybuilding, the sleep still coming. doing what you're doing, Any then sleep? you got to come back to the <laughs> up hotel, get ready, get to the building, mm. do the event, people think we're planning everything out. Right. We ain't got no time to plan everything right. out. And then after that, find something to eat, get back to your hotel. If you're on main event, you're getting in at one o'clock, Two o'clock, get up six, seven o'clock to take a flight. We flew every single day. So pro wrestling has a way more demanding Tax schedule and, and than keeping body and building. keeping yourself in shape and too, right? And keeping yourself in shape. Trying to find time at the gym, so do whatever. Bodybuilding and wrestling. Average day, if you were lucky during those three hundred day stretches, how many hours of sleep a day? Oh my God! M most of the time, you're probably sleeping three to four hours. Pills to stay awake. No, I never. I stayed away from. Stayed all away that. from all the garbage. I stayed away from all the garbage. Any juicing? Uh, I know I'm probably well, stealing your thunder. Uh, no, yeah, well, back, back in the day, we weren't. When I when I came in, uh, a lot of guys had juiced, yeah. but I was there when the drug testing started. If you remember, yeah. Shortly in the nineties, sure. you know all the problems yeah, he had. Shit hit the fan. Shit yeah. hit the fan. So yeah. again, they would walk right in, watch your pee right in the cup. So Did you hit? But you hit the gas while you were bodybuilding, though, right? Yes, of okay. course, oh, yeah. definitely. Right. I mean, you're in great shape now. But, but, I can't. Yeah. You know, but I can't that's believe, that's you know. one of the things I think, and that's one of the things I looked at too. With it, I, I said, "Man, do I really want to do this?" Because I started checking into the pro realm mm. and seeing what they had to do yeah. to be in that kind of shape. <sighs> and how much they take and that they have their own I mean I understand some of the drug cycles of some of the professional bodybuilders are 100,000 plus a year alone yeah and then you make no money on top of it of right course. Oh, boy. of course yeah so you have to have a sponsor but just think about that I wasn't willing to put all that stuff in my body that's one of the things people talk about I me mean, even Vince McMahon he seen me in 2005 when I signed my new contract with him he looked at me and says Tatanka, you look the same. Mm. I go, Vince, you look the same too. <laughs> but I believe that's a big benefit with me because I've stayed away from all those bad things. Right. But you were around Doesn't the... mean perfect, but eating good. Sure. Not out partying all the time. But you yeah, stayed out of the drug scene though. Yes, definitely. But you were around a lot of guys that were drugging. Oh, yes. Oh, I can imagine. What I, was that like? Uh, absolutely terrible. Can I mean, you share with us the craziest thing you ever saw? Uh, I've seen a lot of crazy things. I said probably the most craziest thing, you know, we feel for him. I mean, he's he's better now. But I remember the guy who I drove with all the time was Undertaker. Okay. My first five years, that's who I traveled with all the time. Okay. We just hit it off, me and Mark. So we flew into, actually we were in Canada. 
Mark came to my room to actually say, okay, let's go. We're going to go work out. He says, let's go stop by Jake's room. Now, we had just got in, just flew in. Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake. By the time we got to Jake's Snake room, he was already lit up. Mm. Oh, boy. Already lit up. Mm. Smoking. Crack. Already crack, lit up. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Cracking. So oh, it's boy. great to see him yeah, in a way better now. place today, all now. of us, you know. But it's just seeing all the stuff that guys went through. But were you worried about, like, work? You know, professional wrestling's dangerous. Yeah, what about of the course. You're working with a guy that's cracked out of his mind. If it's a centimeter you know? off, you could be paralyzed. Exactly. I mean? But, well, you know, I agree with that. But it, it, there's something different about our era. When guys got into the locker room, you would see guys that would go out and spend, maybe stay out all night long. Mm -hmm. But there was something tough about all the guys then. When it came to showtime... Yeah. They put Everybody up. They put gave a hundred percent and left all their energy. They were able to turn that light on. Love, and all the love, all everything right. in the ring, and it, it was just the guys were just a different breed. They're not like that today. The guys were just tough, man. Guys would go out every single night, but they'd get in the ring and just perform like unbelievably. So I'm getting the feeling this generation of wrestlers you don't have a ton of respect for. It's not that I don't have the respect for, but it's it's just it's a total different game. You you look at these guys, man, and some. <laughs> you don't think I'm Jack? Uh, well, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, when, when I came, I'm pinning you right, now. Hey, now I'm pinning you. Hey, this is ridiculous. Yeah, he tried it's to ridiculous. set up a Royal Rumble right in here. Yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. What's going on? It is, it, when I came in 2005, one of the things that the agent said to me, which was. Uh, at that time, it was Ricky the Dragon Steamboat mm. and Arn Anderson. It says, we oh. talk to these kids all the time. We talk to these kids all the time, but they don't want to listen. Mm -hmm. They don't want to listen. What's hurt, what's changed in this business is the respect yeah. and all the stuff that built this business and the things that guys did. We would set, if you were brand new, we didn't, we, we didn't sit there and tell guys, well, this is what I want to do. When I first came in, the first guy I worked with, the first match I had, was with the million dollar man Ted DiBiase. Sweet. What a match to have. Right into the yeah. deep end of the pool. Right into the deep end of the pool. But with nice. a solid worker oh, who's gonna make sure God. you're successful, what a pro right? Too. Exactly. Nice. But when I worked with him, I walked up to him because the way we were brought up mm -hmm. and how we were taught, it's not like that now. we I walked up and said, Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, it's an honor to meet you. It's going to be a pleasure to work with you. you Tell go. me what you want me to do. And if he asked you to carry, shut up. And if he asked you to carry his bags, what You're would you have done? Him, right? I would have done the there same you thing. Go. Have, you, but, have you heard about Leo Rush recently? He was refusing to carry the bags. He's a new guy in the company, and he's refusing. And he also said that a man of color shouldn't have to do this. Any thoughts? Oh my God! I figured you'd love. Here that we go. One. Politics. Yeah, mm -hmm. I figured you'd love that one. Well, that's politics. Yeah, it's I don't every, have to carry this bag. It's everything that's going on right now. Yeah. What are you talking about? By the way, he's 130 pounds sopping wet. Just saying, I'd let you know. And that's another thing too. Yeah. All these yeah. guys in this industry. Awesome. I watch guys come into the locker room, and they've got legends and Hall of Famers and guys who've literally made millions of dollars in the industry, and they'll walk right by. They don't even know who they are. And, want, and you don't, don't even know, know who they don't are. Care. And they'll walk right by and won't even say hello, mm -hmm. or they'll be sitting in a chair and won't stand up to give a seat to Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Right. right. Or guys who are just legends. The respect, what was built in this business. Yeah. I believe it has a lot to do with rock and stone cold era. Wrestling got so big. Interesting. It got so big. There was a flood into our market. Yeah. You had everyone out there the that was doing wrestling schools because they seen money. Sure. But they shouldn't have been training anybody. Of course not. They shouldn't have been telling it. And in certifying guys, you're a professional wrestler. Right. You know, I, here's the greatest story I've ever heard from Steve Kern. Uh, Steve, oh, Kern, Steve Kern. Yeah, Steve Kern says you could talk to the average wrestling fan, any wrestling fan, and say, is wrestling fake? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you can ask them the same question. Well, there are guys who get hurt, and there are guys who really don't like each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the ones you're talking about are the workers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a way big difference between being a wrestler and being a worker. Mm hmm knowing what to do in that ring, not only to be believable, but to get those people emotionally tied to that character, emotionally tied to that match. You don't see that anymore. Guys are just out there dancing. 
going through the steps, going through the motions. Did it matter? It's like a dance. Did it matter to you? If Not you... slowing down, okay? Right. To tell a story, yeah. to make people be emotionally involved. I yes. call it a flip-flop fest because they flip and they fly and they flop and finishes happen in the first 30 seconds of a match, 47 kickouts. It's like, what's going exactly. on here? What is going on? What yeah, are there's you going... no story. What are you doing? All these big power wrestling, mm -hmm. right? strong man wrestling, right. kicking out everything, kicking out of everything, mm -hmm. big moves right at the beginning. Kick, is, is that really? No. 135 pounder, just like you said. <laughs> I can't. If, it, if some of us <laughs> don't like guys like this, the reason why, because you act like you're so tough. Right. But guys from my era, <laughs> we'll beat your damn ass. <laughs> well, that's, you're right. right. We, no, we, were literally, no, no, we were literally beat your ass. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was over in London uh, on a tour years ago, and I'm in a ring, you know, it was uh, an English promoter, and they can be comical. A real big promoter has a million dollar promotion over there. Brian Dixon mm -hmm. promotion, people might have heard of him, but everyone knows. Mm -hmm knows who he is in the wrestling industry. But he had this small guy who was working with me. Oh. What'd you do? So, man, I nailed him down. Boom! He's coming back up on all fours. I actually kicked him in the gut so I beat his You are my ass. hero. Good for you. You I, are yes, my hero. But I beat his ass so bad that afterwards, okay. he ran to his locker room <laughs> with his friend, yeah. and he was getting a knife. Oh really? Oh, really? They cut me. Nice. So here I there was there was like one or two. Is this w jackass still in the business? Whoever this is. Uh, I don't know who he is. I this, can't this, this years okay. ago. I, I, okay. I, I doubt he's probably in the industry. Okay. But we actually, I'll go. Oh really? Let's go right to the locker room. Mm. So there was one other guy, former yeah. WWE guy, I think it was, I can't remember who was there with me, but they went with me to the locker room. I opened up the door right where, where, where his, him and his friend was at. I says, "What's up, man?" <laughs> What are you doing? His friend had already convinced him. Don't mess with the time. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah sure. Idea. Don't yeah. mess with him. Uh, yeah. You know, by the time I got there, he had already <laughs> calmed him down. Okay. And he says, I'm sorry. But right. that's what you have in this industry. You got a lot of guys who came in being taught by guys who are not, should have never trained guys because that flood. Right. Rock and Stone Cold, the business was crazy. Then. It was. You remember was every gas station at that time? Every gas station had wrestling t-shirts for sale. Right. Sure. Everyone was wearing when a you, wrestling t-shirt. When you that have time. kids getting like suspended from school for a day because they wore a shirt that says "suck it." Exactly. You got something in society going on here. Those ratings were well, insane. We, no, but we also insane. We, we also say yeah. for the time it saved it saved the WWE, but in the long run it hurt the industry. It definitely hurt the industry. Yeah, in many it ways. It brought that whole front end and a different mindset of how to work, a different mindset of who were training people. Also, everyone just got in, not thinking about what well, who can I be, what kind. When I got in, it wasn't a choice. You had to be a character. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I can come in with just my boots, right. tights, and knee pads. You had to be a character. Everybody was characters. You look, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Legion of Doom, Macho. Rick the Model Martel, Macho Man, sure. Demolition. <laughs> Everybody looked totally yeah. unique, totally different. No one looked the same. It's cookie cutter now. Oh, I can't. Well, they don't care if yeah, they're going to lose right. either. I mean, yes. they, I understand 50 -50 that. 50-50 booking. We call 50-50 booking I'll all pin time. you this week. You get to pin me next week. Who gets over here? Neither one. Of course. This is horrendous. Was it a problem for you doing a job? No, but I was very fortunate when I came in that Vince, as you know, I, mean, I, went, I went two years undefeated. You were huge, yeah. You were huge. So I didn't lose push. nothing for two years. And then at, and with that kind of push, when you finally do do something, which I had my first defeat with Luvid Borga, Oy. but it wasn't just with Luvid Borga. He nailed me with a chair shot. Believe me, he nailed me. But it wasn't that. They also brought out the WWF champion, Yokozuna, with Mr. Fuji. So it took all those elements to defeat me, so right. they kept me strong. Right. And even though that he beat me and pinned me by a chair shot, when they announced me again with Luve, my na the pop was even higher. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they, they, they were upset with what happened. Mm -hmm. So it can work in your favor. So they had got me so strong at that point that it didn't hurt me at all. Of mm -hmm. finally having that first yeah, defeat. Sure. It only made me better. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take it back to the very beginning. You've covered respect. You've covered how people should behave when they meet a legend. How about your chance meeting that changed your whole life when you met Nature Boy Buddy Rogers? Oh, tremendous. How uh, does this happen? Uh, well, I'm, I'm in Florida, and uh, great story. I'm actually going to Blockbuster Video. 
Okay. Blockbuster's not around anymore yeah. because VHS, times have changed. VHS yeah. tape. But I kept going to block, Blockbuster Video and I kept running into this young kid. Every time I ran into this young kid, he kept telling me, you should be a pro wrestler. You should be a pro wrestler. I, like, yeah, 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 kid. <laughs> sure, yeah, kid. Yeah, 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 kid. Go away, bother I, I me. Just came, I just came out of tryouts for the Dolphins. I'd made the cuts. I could have signed with the Dolphins, but I stayed where I was working. I had a career job with Bally's, right. mm-hmm. Bally's Health and Tennis Organization. I was selling a million dollars worth of business a year myself. So real quick, I just want to cut you off. To, he was talking about bodybuilding against wrestling, pro football, uh, football, pro football and wrestling, which is tougher. Which one's tougher? Training yeah. wise. Uh, I still would have to say pro football today is a very hard impacting hitting, but professional wrestling, you go out there with no pads, no nothing. 300 times a year. You got it. (laughs) That's the key. That's the key. 300 times a year. Mm -hmm. No off season. All right. NFL only has that. What? Really hard hitting. If you yeah. if you play football at all, you know Monday you usually don't hit hard. You're going over what happened on the game. Right. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're, you're hitting. Yeah. Friday, you're not hitting. Right. You're Relaxing. walking through, right. and then you have your game on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Us right. every single night, one hundred percent every single night. Sometimes twice a day, right. three hundred days a year. Perhaps right. those lunatics For, during the seventies when football was much rougher than it is today. Maybe they worked pretty damn hard. I oh, mean, yes. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, yes. Jack Tatum ever, you know, guys oh, like that. I want to go back to the Buddy Rogers story. I didn't mean sure. to interrupt you on that. Yeah, so yeah. Buddy Rogers, just tremendous. I kept running into the kid. So I said, okay. I said, let me check out what this kid's talking about. So I turned on. I wasn't a big wrestling fan at that okay. time. I came from football. And, and uh, I turned on Saturday morning TV and I nice. started hearing about what guys were, previous athletes, and I started watching these guys come to the ring and I started realizing, wait a minute, as I've seen their schedule every single night, I've seen sold out Coliseums mm-hmm. on TV, then I've seen the uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, two by fours, I've seen the Macho Man hands, all of the merchandise, t-shirts, I went, wait a minute. Boy, that crowd sure Cha-ching. sounds loud. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly Cha-ching. what it is. Absolutely. Because I, I was searching, even though I was working in a corporate field where I was making six digits I still wanted to go further than that I was working in ballets and I wanted to go higher than that I mean they were, they were getting ready to make me a, an area director making a quarter million a year but I was still involved heavily with that sporting background in me that was still calling mm-hmm. so I finally by the way it's a wo- gutsy gutsy move to walk away from a quarter oh, mill to take the, a chance and yeah. you don't even know if you're going to make it well it's a good story and I'll tell you that too when we, with this thing with Buddy here because being in New York is pretty, pretty cool uh, with the story, but the bo- bottom line is finally I watched, I finally said, okay, introduce me to who you're saying is so special. He says, okay. So I get to go down to the intercoastal waterways of Florida, big, beautiful home that, that's a nice area to live in Florida because you live on the water, which is prime real estate. That's why I actually, my first meeting was at Nature Boy's personal house. Mm. I walk in, I get to meet him and his wife, his family. You could see by the way they were dressed, classy. You could see by the way they lived their life. Do you they realize done you very st- well. You stepped in shit. I stepped right in. I'm looking Big through. giant pile. Yeah, I'm looking through his sliding <laughs> glass door. There's the oh intercoastal waterway. Boats going by. He had his all his. How did this kid at Blockbuster yes. know Buddy Rogers? Yeah, he I, met, yeah, this he is met, weird. And had, had all of his belts and show oh, glass wow. boxes. Yeah, you could see it was very, me and Buddy just hit it off. We, wow. Nature Boy and I just hit it up, but I still didn't make a decision right then. I'm not stupid. I wasn't going to give up a six-digit going to a quarter million job just like that. Mm. It took about a few months. I'm in my office all of a sudden. Guess who walks up the stairs, took his time to come to my business, walk up the stairs, no other than the Hall of Famer. Nature Boy Buddy Rogers himself mm, mm. comes in, he sits down, he sits in my office, and he says things to me, being a winner and, and believing in myself. He said things to me at that time that I couldn't let it go. He got me. Challenge you. you. Challenge you. And I went, ah, oh, this is it. And I started telling people, oh, that's what I'm thinking about doing. You're crazy. You've mm, lost your course. mind. Everybody in my organization, you lost your mind. And you're, you're in a great position. You're the only divisional manager, which that's what that ring is, from Million Dollar Club right there, Scandinavian wow, ring. Wow, look at that. So, so finally I made the decision. And the funny part is the company was owned by nothing but Italians at that time, Palumbo's. So here I am sitting in my office. All, all of a sudden, all the executives come. So there's three Italian guys in their suits. Come sit down in my office. 
I felt like I was sitting down with the Godfather, <laughs> trying to make me an offer mm -hmm. that I couldn't refuse. They offered me thirty thousand dollars right then. I was already making a hundred. We'll make it give you one hundred thirty thousand dollars a year. You know, we're already getting making you to be prepared to be area director, which is going to be a quarter million a year. I just said, listen, guys. You didn't make it to where you are at in your life without taking chances, mm. believing in yourself. Chris, I says, I got to do this. I says, hey, Chris, you know we can't bring you back. We got to fill this position. There's mm. only one. I mm. says, I fully understand that. Mm -hmm. So, but anything great, I will say to all the listeners sacrifice. out here. Sacrifice. Any sacrifice, you got no. it. Risk. Sure. Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah. Work for the biggest company in the world. I'm on contract with him today. What did he do for WrestleMania? Mortgage his house. He took everything he had. <laughs> like everything he had. Line. House, all the money. Sure. And he put it into the concept of WrestleMania. Mm. And look what it is today. There you go. Now WrestleMania is doing over $100 million at pay-per-view alone. Not only are we bid it on, and not only is it one of the top five sporting events of all sporting events now mm -hmm. with winter, summer Olympics, Super Bowl, Final Four. Here's WWE WrestleMania. And the cities that host it, everyone is doing for that week economic impact is Huge. over a hundred million dollars. Think how that week. turned. They used sure. to have to pay for the venue. Now the venue pays for them. Exactly. Yep. Amazing. So look what happened by mm -hmm. taking a risk. Same thing with me. I took that risk. I got stepped out on the water and I was really in a, in a great opportunity there because Nature Boy Buddy Rogers was very close to Pretty Bear Larry Sharp. There you go. So he set me up instantly to go to there. He says, go in, get your training, get out. You're an athlete. You can get this done in three months. I went in, I was done in three months, but I spent extra time on weekends in the Monster Factory when all the other boys would go party on the weekend Friday Saturday I was in there with a guy by the name of Dennis Knight okay I was in there with him doing extra work on the mm -hmm. weekend so by three months I was out there you go nature boy buddy Rogers set me up with George Scott the original booker of World Wrestling Federation during the Hogan years he had his own promotion in Carolinas North American Wrestling Association which became South Atlantic Pro Wrestling and that's where I began and then one year later, less than a year later, after Pro Wrestling Illustrated, which you mentioned earlier, yep. had me runner up for Rookie of the Year. Yep. In less than a year, I had already had two trials for WWF, and on my third trial, I got signed. So I was signed in only one year of making the decision. Fast track. So fast track. So there what's funny, the funny story, all those people, the naysayers on the sidelines, ah, oh, you're not going to do that. You're not going to make it. You're a fool for leaving your job. hundred grand a year. They give you $30,000, $130,000. Make... They were all laughing at me at my corporate job. I understand it was a huge club. Had a 70,000 square foot yeah, club for sure. balance. Had a restaurant lounge. All of them were in the restaurant lounge one day, and all of a sudden someone went, oh, my God, look. It's Chris Chavis. He's a WWF. They went, oh my God, he did it. Yeah. They didn't even have enough time to, to criticize yeah. you what happened so of course. fast. So I would tell I would tell everybody out there, believe in yourself. Sure. Don't listen to it's the a, naysayers. It's a great if message. You got, if sure. you got a dream inside of yourself, believe in yourself. So go after it, chase it. Take the risk. Yeah, yeah. So can I ask you in the uh, pre WWF days, which obviously as we just found out were not for long, uh, can you tell us about working with Ken Shamrock? Oh, my God! I didn't even realize, by the way, Mikey, that Shamrock had, like, you know, this is years before we saw him in the Attitude Era. Yeah. Yes. So tell us about uh, that. Ken Shamrock, as you know, was a, a fighter at that time yeah. doing MMA. I came out of nothing but playing football. All we needed, both of us, all we knew how to do was hit hard. Yeah. We would wrestle each other and beat each other. <laughs> we were tough, though, but right. we beat each other up. Actually, Vince Torelli was what he went by, Ken Shamrock, Vince Torelli, Worked for North American Wrestling Association, and actually, I faced him at our biggest event where we did ten thousand dollars as an independent on my native lands, mm. Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina, Lumbee Nation of North Carolina, okay. uh, and we did our, our event there, and that's where I defeated him for the title for the SAPW title. Okay. But we just beat each other up. He had hooked me in Northern Light, me boom right mm. on my head. Mm. He knew nothing but how to fight, and right. I knew nothing but how to hit someone hard because I came from a football background. What did you think of his run when he, you know, during the Attitude Era? Any thoughts on Shamrock's career? Uh, I think he did fantastic, man. I mean, Vince loved that concept of having. Look at Brock Lesnar, mm -hmm. shoot fighters. Mm -hmm. He's real. It's real. He's real. Coming into our Look, industry. Growing up, I wanted my wrestler to. Be able to beat the shit out of me. Yeah, you exactly. Yeah. I, mean? I didn't want a guy that I could beat the shit out of. What's the point? <laughs> and look at the, and look at that today. That's exactly what you have today. Yep, I you say got it every fans day. And sitting in the audience, he goes, "I can whip 
his ass, yeah. but he's looking like a Superman. And, and I'm going to tell you, too, what I understand, too, Vince McMahon, you know, also doesn't, un he doesn't like the NXT talent. Mm. He doesn't like the small that. wrestlers. I oh, yeah. That. Yep. Uh, Triple H loves it. Yeah. Vince is not crazy about it is what I understand. And the reason he's not crazy about it because he likes the believability what yes. we're talking about. He likes the guy, remember back in World Wrestling Federation, again, what we talked about earlier, everybody was monsters. Yes. Yeah, they were. When we walked they in were. somewhere, the fans didn't do what they did. It was like the parting of the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. The fans would back up. Mm -hmm. Here comes Taker. All the guys, just monsters, guys that you would not mess with. Now look at the guys. Hey, Don you can't even tell they're wrestlers. Don, no. Don Morocco's a monster compared to Sami Zayn. You of know, course. I mean, this is a joke. It, it, it's amazing how the industry has changed it has. and brought that new breed of wrestlers in. Right. It, 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 how about the women's of, uh, Any evolution? Thoughts on that? I think it's tremendous what they've done for the women. I mean, it, it, I feel it's been rammed down our throats. If I can be of honest, of course, exactly. I think it's way overrated, but uh, that's yeah, me. Yeah, but, but they're better looking than fabulous Moolah, man. Well, that's uh, true. Of course. What May Young wasn't hot? What's no. wrong with you? But what, <laughs> they're, what they're trying to do, you have to understand the WWE of today. They're mm. trying to touch all those things that <laughs> mean something. If you know what I mean, absolutely. Yeah. You know, women taking care of women. You know, but it's great. I mean, you got some great talent out there. Charlotte Flair. They, they do. Come they on, do. I mean, she's got I, that well, history. I, she, she, I got to be honest. I think she's a better presentation than any man on the man roster right now. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, unbelievable. That's just my opinion. You so know? She's a, to me, it's smart marketing, right? You you're she's touching everything. Exactly. And it makes sense. Vince, that's the reason Vince has got such. I just read an article that was shocking to me. I just read an article uh, online. It talked about that. It's amazing that WWE continues to grow in their revenue, mm. but their TV ratings are, are actually dropping, yeah. but they're growing in their revenue. It's so weird. They, it's because Mike, can all, you explain that? They Mike? also reach across many markets, but I'm which gonna, helps I'm going to explain this, though. How, it's how not a TV. I have drop. a 29-year-old, right? They don't watch cable TV anymore. They stream everything, just like this broadcast, okay. right? This okay. is streaming. It's not must-watch TV, but people catch it you know, on the way to work, at work, at home, watch it anytime you want right. Netflix all that stuff you got the sure. network you, you know you, you got people paying at $9.99 I can watch watching you every pay-per-view exactly. go watch any exactly. match exactly. anytime yeah. And that's tremendous. You remember everybody laughing at Vince when he started it? The greatest right. move now ever. Now, advertising, it was great. I think they're at 1.9 subscribers. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a great idea. Subscribers mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Now everybody is, is ju jumping on the bandwagon I found and the following what Vince has done. I found the network idea to be as consistent with everything else Vince has ever done. He gets this great idea. He goes for it. it I thought it was going to work, and it has. Tremendous. It was Look brilliant. at the content that you get for 10 bucks. It's a month. ridiculous. It's a steal. You get every I think pay it's per view for free, but you get to see everything. Everything in the history I think of the company. Steal. And, just, and, and you got to think tremendous. about it this way. The average customer doesn't want to sit and watch three hours of oh, wrestling. Oh, I can't anymore. Not nowadays. Not the way it's written. You know, no. they, you know we talk about it all the time. Yeah. Back in the day with Backlund and Morocco, they'd hold each other in an arm bar when I used to go to the garden for 10 engaged. minutes. And we were engaged. Yeah. Today's fan isn't dealing with no, that. No, they're going to chant yeah. CM Punk during that arm bar. Of course. <laughs> but, the, the, the th but the thing is, is you just talked about it, creative writing. Mm. Yeah, the writing is right. Not, not only is it, 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 when we started our business, it was Vince McMahon, Pat Patterson, a successful wrestler. Yes, sure. And Chief J. Strombo, a successful wrestler. A successful that was it. Italian Indian. Right? Uh, you got it. I can't anymore. Joe Go Scarpa. On. You got you it. Go. Yep. He, he loved the Native American, our culture, but he wasn't Native how did American. You, how did you feel about that, by the way? Like, you know, just your it, personal it, thought. It, no, it, it didn't bother me because I, I, I'm not one of those Native Americans that believe that the Redskins need to take off. I know what they're saying. Interesting. I know what they're saying. I know what okay. the end, because back in that day, we were called Redskins. Is it wrong for it me to It was a love... racial term, but what I say is, hey, you could change a mascot, mm -hmm. but is it really going to change what's happening on native lands? Right. Mm -hmm. we're, in in our, our culture or our race of people, we're leading every high-risk category that you don't want to lead. Right. Poverty, high school dropout, mm -hmm. teen pregnancy, mm -hmm suicide, drugs, alcohol. You don't want to be in those. The native culture is in that. Are you going to change the team mascot? Is it going to change that? Hell no. 
I believe that we need to face the true issues. Same thing that we have with our politics today. Plan, plan, plan. The Democrats plan over here about Russian collusion instead of facing the issues that we need to face for right. the American people. Right. Let's address immigration. Let's get it solved. How long can you kick it down the road? Mm -hmm. When are we going to address it and mm -hmm. finally solve it? Right. Why are the American people paying for so many? It's a, it, it astonishes me that we have vets out there that don't have <laughs> all the assistance that they can get. Right. Okay. Food assistance. Right. Money assistance. You got illegal immigrants that come in and immigrant. They're getting everything. Right. They get everything. And the, and Why? The, and the veteran stands there with. And the veteran like, stands you know, there with nothing. On. That's. that's it, I can't figure that. Out. So uh, Th thoughts on Donald Tr uh, President Trump? Sorry. I think Donald Trump is actually did a phenomenal job. Not only did I vote for him, but I think he's going to have a tremendous victory in 2020. And because the people that have been supporting him, his base is now speaking up. Okay, people. Okay, if you notice now, people are coming out and going, "I voted for Trump." Mm -hmm. People are, before they were quiet because everyone was giving everybody so much hectic. But come on, how can you fight with what is going on with our economy? How can you fight when unemployment is low as it is? And how, how can you fight when African American unemployment is the lowest? Hispanic is the lowest. Companies are excited. Regulations, their hands being tied. Now they're free to expand, to invest, to hire workers. How is that bad for anybody? That's good for everybody. Oh, oh, oh Trump, the tax cuts were only for the rich. Bullcrap. It's affected all the working people the most. It killed me. The middle class. It killed me. Yeah, yeah some yeah. people, it affected them, meaning they had to pay more. Mm -hmm. But the middle class, who they're trying to say, the Democrats, where we need to focus, that's exactly who it's benefited. How can you, he's putting money in your pocket. It's all about America, not about foreign countries, it's about standing strong, not about being weak. Mm -hmm. Everything he's doing, I'm agreeing. Does Trump sometimes say things that sometimes people go, oh, you shouldn't mm -hmm. have said that? But let me tell you something. I've worked for Vince McMahon, still on contract. Billionaires are totally different. Mm -hmm. Hello? They've done it their way, and they're successful, and they're successful doing it their way. And they know what they're doing. They're a different breed. Sure. When you're with Vince McMahon, all the years I've been with him, when you look at him, you know he's someone different. That's right. Not right. because he's Vince McMahon. Just his mindset. His mindset how he's, you look at him and you see him. Do, clocks going. Do you think today's going. WWE is a microcosm of today's USA? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, that, wow, that's 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 a real good thing. I'm gonna go me, with yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Me and Tony Atlas was just he, he was kind of speaking about that. Mm. He says, "Look at what WWE's doing. They're kind of matching everything that's going out with, with with what's happening in politics right now. How they're putting certain people in positions." You know, when we were talking about that, Tony made me realize, too, about how the minorities were the ones who were so important before in World Wrestling Federation, but how they're changing things today in the company. But I have to say, yes, mm -hmm. I agree with you. How do we get to the name Tatanka? Tatanka, we, uh, Vince sat down with me and he says, Chris, he says, I respect that you're real native blood from the Lumbee Nation. He says, I don't want to disrespect your heritage at all. He says, why don't you find the name? He gave it to me. So I started researching names, and as I researched names, the thing about Native American names, perfect example, yeah, good example right here, Dances with Wolves. I was about to say, did you get it from Dances with Wolves? No, I didn't get it from Dances with Wolves, but I want you to, I'm film. using it because Native Americans name things, not because how we name things. Oh, I think Jeff is a cool name. I think this is a cool name. No, Natives always name how your characteristics are. It's something personal. Yeah. It's about your identity. It's about who you are. It's about what they see. That's the reason why the lady said, you know, why do they call you Stands with a Fist? Because someone upset me. I stood up. Boom! Kevin Costner, the native scene in Dancing with the Wolf, Dances with Wolves. So the thing about native names when I did research, they're normally three or four words or two or three words. Hard to use that for wrestling. They named me Has Small PB. Yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> they named me Bitches Constantly. <laughs> I got like that. That's a What they give you? <laughs> what they give you, Jim? <laughs> Chief Yo, bro. <laughs> Chief Yo, bro. They, they call me Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> no, that's three that's words, that's pal. Good. Three words, Chief Yo. That's so, 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 right. good, oh y'all. You guys picked up on that one real, 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 real good. <laughs> so again, most words are like that, but I kept researching. All of a sudden, I seen this name. 
Tatanka. Nice. I went, wait a minute. Yeah. I went, let me research. Sioux name. What does it mean? Buffalo. Buffalo. I went, oh, and I sat and I started thinking, Tatanka. To, to, oh, yeah, okay. for the fans. Yeah, okay. right. So I went back to Vince, and Vince says, you find something? I go, yeah. He said, what'd you find? I went to Tonka. He says, what does it mean? Buffalo. He says, I love it. We're going with he it. Because yeah. you're going to run over your opponents. That's awesome. You Buffalo, sure did. Boom, Buffalo just runs over there. Probably, you're not gonna so let me them. ask you a question. You got an incredible push for such oh, a long man. time. Yes. How much shit did you get from a lot of the older wrestlers Ooh, that behind they the give you a lot of problems Ooh. in the ring, out of the ring? Uh, well, in, in, that has a lot to do with who you are. Uh, when you started saying that, the first person I started thinking about was Undertaker, not in a negative or a positive way. Because mm -hmm. I'm sitting there, I just came in, just started, and I'm doing that poster where I have my hands up, and Taker's over there as they're doing professional shots, and all the boys are over there. He goes, look at this young kid coming in, already getting t-shirts, and he was just joking right. because we're already driving together. What determines how the boys treat you is, are you real? Are you, are you cool? Are you humble? Are you stuck up on yourself? You know, do you think that you know it all? Meaning, you wrestle first on the card, okay? Me, Rick the Model Martel, first match. Mm. Do you go to the locker room and do you get undressed, take a shower and leave and go out and party? Or do you go get a chair and set it by the ring curtain and watch all the other great guys throw on that card? Bret the Hitman Hart. Macho Man Randy Savage, all the big names. Are you watching all the matches? I'd sit my chair there and watch all the matches. You made it hard for them to dislike uh, you. Yeah, and matter of fact, you were doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. Matter of fact, go. Chief J. Strombo, when you got new guys coming in, Chief, he won't. They won't tell you this, but they'll just come by and just see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. They'll see what you're doing, checking up on you. That's what they do. They check. That's they, great. And if you're having a bad attitude, it's kind of like a college fraternity. In our business, you got to get through the frat house before you get to to the main house. Mm. You don't get to the office if you can't mix with the boys because we're family. Uh, we're on the road 300 days a year. Mm. You got to be able to work with the guys. You can't be a pain in the ass. You can't be a problem because if you're a problem, you're affecting that yeah, whole sure. locker room. Sure. You're infecting that whole locker room with negatives. You're bitching, complaining, causing problems. No, 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 they didn't talk about that. So I was just always a cool guy, personal. Didn't act like I was anyone special, just a normal guy. But blessed enough to be able to work at World Wrestling Federation and have that opportunity and have that push. Thoughts? So I never have problems with guys. Okay. The biggest rib that I had ha happen to me, and Chief J. Strombo stood up for me, the biggest rib I ever have happened to me was with the Steiner brothers. Okay. okay. I, I went to go work, and afterwards I took a shower. And of course, I'm like Jimmy Hart. We have our hair. We still have all our hair. Yeah. Blow drying our hair, being all pretty. But that was that's a big part that Jimmy's known about. Big part that's known about me. Our hairstyles. Well, I went to go get my blow dryer out of my bag, and I pulled it out, and I reached to the end of the cord to go plug in. And I went, my plug had been cut off. Oh. oh. So Stein has to cut the plug off. That's okay. the worst thing that that's happened worst? to me. You got lucky. If you, if you, but that means they like you, right? Okay. Right, Chief Judge right. Strombo stood up for me. And says, "Don't you do that ever again to Tatanka." He got on the Steiner brother. But if they don't like you, what's a, what's like? Move. What's one of the worst ribs you ever saw? Were, oh, you, were you ever un, were you ever okay. uncomfortable with it? Oh, I was uncomfortable when I seen. I won't say I was not that I was uncomfortable, but sitting there in a the locker room and watching Mr. Fuji open up a side of a big garment bag right which was Virgil's bag okay uh -oh. and Virgil would get a lot of heat at times because of the things that he would do right and watch Mr. Fuji just take a big Ugh. horse dump <laughs> nice in that garment bag and then zip it back up nice oh if a you're not white, like if you're not like believe me you're gonna come back yeah. your shirt sleeves will be cut off yeah your underwear will have tiger bomb in it, and you won't know until it's too oh, late. You put them on, right? Or your bag will be locked at the top of the ceiling <laughs> with no bolt cutters around. Oh my oh, god! If you're not like they were, they, they'll make it so bad for you that you you want to leave. Mm. Check out Fuji leaving a special soy sauce. Oh mm. yeah, Mr. Fuji was he was he was the one that if there was a problem with someone, wow. if Mr. Fuji's coming to look for you, God rest his soul, Mr. Fuji coming looking for you, you're in trouble. Did you dislike anyone? 
I didn't really dislike anyone. There's probably the first guy that came in our industry that I had a problem with and a lot of guys had a problem with, and that's the reason he had a short-lived career, was Ahmed Johnson. Mm. Interesting. Do you remember him? Sure Absolutely. do. Yeah. Now, he got they, a big they, push. They, yeah, well, they wanted to push him, yeah. but me and Jeff Jarrett was working with him all the time, but he would literally stand in front of the mirror in the locker room with the other boys. I'm the greatest. I'm awesome. He's talking to himself. In you know, I got to nice. tell you. So, and then he would hurt guys. He, he did not know how to work. He yeah. did not know how to, I won't say dance, because we didn't dance it, but he did not know how to flow right. to get that special flow. I'll tell you, he might have had a killer build, but he did nothing for me. No, no, no. He had no aura no, no. whatsoever no, to no, me no. As, a, as a wrestling me fan. Too. Like, me too. Me too. Big he, deal. I can't believe they were even looking to push him like they that They pushed at that the time. shit out of him. But don't forget, <laughs> don't forget at that time when he came in, there was a lot of stuff going on at that time. When Ahmed mm. Johnson came in is when everyone had left W, not yeah. everyone. Well, it was getting went there, to yeah. Turner Broadcast. Tied yeah. to changing, That's shifting. when Hogan right. was there, Macho Man, and, and there was a big shift there. And we were looking for new guys. I think they were looking for new guys to try to get some attention to our company because we were battling at that time. Now, were you ever contacted by Turner at all? Yes. Uh, what would have done with that? Uh, I'm going to say this right now. We're going to get this clear again. Okay, I've already called him out on it again, and I'll call him out on it right here on the on the radio because I've never heard anything great about him. Eric Bischoff. Okay, okay. yes, we'll give credit for credit to do with the success that they had, but I came from WWF, but it was probably ninety six, ninety seven. I wanted to take a break, so and even Chief J Strongbow told me should take a break. The company's focused on fighting with WCW instead of focusing on what's going on here. So, but I was still in contract with WWF. I was contacted by WCW, Eric Bischoff, okay? Contacted me, wanted me to come down to Nitro, wanted me to be sitting by ringside, kind of bringing me an introduction so they could eventually bring me into the company. Okay, I've made that statement before and Eric's went after that saying, oh, I never did that. Mm. I've already called him out on you liar. Right. And I'm saying it again, he's a liar. Right. You know, what is wrong with you? You called me. Yeah, right. Why would you? Why would I want to make a story up like that for? Sure, sure. Well, right. well, what benefit is it to me? So, so me, I look at him totally different. Every because of that, I look at him totally different. I don't like you, Eric. I'm sorry. Right. Just that simple. How about someone you do like? I would assume Rick Martel, Hall of Famer, in your opinion. Yes, definitely. When I came into the biz, when I came into the business, I was still green. I'd only been working one year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fast really? track. I, I'm f I'm fine tuned already. Fast track. Uh, Chief J. Strombo said something to me famous, a, a famous statement that's just became so uh, true. He said, "Tatanka, five years into this business, you just start learning," mm. and he's so true because as soon as five years got there, you're really starting to get the flow of it. Not meaning having to do what guys do today, meaning feeling it, knowing what to do in an instant, on the spot, not because you're planning it, not because you gotta talk it out for four hours, knowing like some of the greats, Roddy Piper, know exactly what to do in that ring at that moment to get those fans to pull them into the ring and have them in the palm of his hands. Mm. Okay, so five years, I just started feeling that and understanding that. You Would know? you say your growth process was, was accelerated working with a guy like Martel? Martel is tremendous. That's the reason I was going to say they put go. me with him first. Why? Right. He was a seasoned veteran. Why? He fine-tuned me. I, yes. I learned so much, not by us sitting there talking, talking, by being in the ring with him every night. Timing, positioning, expressions, Fire everything that you need to know to be a big baby face and a superstar in our industry. Rick Martel brought that out, and Rick Martel will tell you. Ever since that's happened, I've always given him credit for my success in the business to him all the time. I'm missing his name all the time, all the time. Memories of WrestleMania Eight and the Survivor Series program with Martel. Your memories of these oh, matches. Oh, it was tremendous. You're working with Rick, the model. Martel. Just watch mm -hmm. these matches. They you hold watch, up great. When, before I came in, when you're watching it on Saturday morning, who'd you see all the time? Mm -hmm. Rick the model Martel, yeah. meaning one of their top stars. You got a locker room back there, and you only got so many guys that's going to be on TV. Yeah. Like today, you got a lot of guys, but uh, now you got all the brands SmackDown, Raw, NXT. You got all of this. Before, it was just one wrestling company. Yeah. Saturday morning TV. 
That was it. So whoever was on TV was top talent. Top talent, Rick the Model Martel. I, so I was so thankful to be able to be to work with him. The Hall of Famer, you better believe it. He needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Did, did you think when the, the the Monday Night Wars were going on, did you think the WWE had a chance of actually closing its doors? Did you think they could lose? This was a close call. Oh, it was a very close call. Did I actually believe that? No. But when I heard that later on, I was like, wow. Mm. But when you start thinking business-wise and you understand business and understand like today, like WWE, I know years ago when I checked out, just operating costs for the company, just to have a flow to operate the company, $50 million years ago. Right. I'm sure now WWE from 2014 to 2019 has doubled their revenue. Mm -hmm. They now just did $930.2 million last year. Jeez. This year they're going Can't to do even. over a billion. These are facts. A billion dollars this year because they're new TV deals. Mm. But you would never say, how could a company go out of business? Well, it's the cash flow problem. Keeping something in operation. Having that $67 million, million dollars are sitting there yeah. just to operate the company. So when that's not coming in, because all those bonuses that you get from being in the number one spot on TV, you're not getting those extra millions of dollars. It can make a big, yeah, you just see this big company, mm -hmm. but you don't understand how big business operates. And one little facet can really mess up the whole thing. Uh, we have a, a host, Evan Ginsberg. He's associate producer for The Wrestler and yep. the Mickey Rourke movie, yeah, if yeah. you remember, right? And 350 Days. Yep. Yeah. He's a big proponent for, you know, older wrestlers getting full medical from the WWE or whatever else. What are your thoughts on all that? Well, did you hear, well, what's the show that you just heard? Uh, it was a late night... Uh, John, Oliver. John Oliver, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people, you know, as far as in our industry, I'm sure WWE didn't like hearing all of that. Yeah, he launched of... that missile right as WrestleMania was yeah, approaching. As yeah, it was I think I keep saying, I think it was more of a Trump thing. I thought he had an opportunity because mm. Linda was with Trump, right? Linda McMahon. Mm -hmm. right. I don't even think it was a WWE thing. I think it was more a sh another shot mm. at Donald Trump, right? Because of the association. Association. Yeah. yeah, it could have been. But uh, again, a lot of things they're talking about there. Let me give you a perfect example. I was just on a tour just recently in Georgia, okay? And the guy who I actually ended up going with was Brian Blair, we're going to do TV for a company in Georgia, but the person we had, we had to go pick up was Paul Orndorff. Okay, here's a WWE Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Now he's not doing good, dementia, yeah. so, but I looked at his life too. I think a WWE Hall of Famer, a lot of guys make mistakes, of course. If you make your own mistake, then you kind of got to lay in that bed yourself. But I see a WWE Hall of Famer that financially, his house was in distress, his yard Big tall grass, leaves all over the roof, you know, mildew on the outside of the house, you know, meaning not being taken care of. A WWE Hall of Famer, in my eyes, just like Hall of Famers in pro football, things like that, mm -hmm. they shouldn't be dealing with things of mm. that nature. If you're a Hall of Famer, you should really have that yeah. lifestyle. It doesn't mean you have to have millions of dollars right. or this extravagant lifestyle At least but the simple things in yeah. your life yeah. should be taken care Understood. of so i would love to see that the guys who work so hard to give so much to the company and make wwe be what it is today that that top talent who gave so much of themselves that they don't have to worry about the little small things do you think that vince will ever do this for them though no. Well, you know, to, to Vince has done a lot behind the scenes that mm -hmm. people sure. don't know. Right. I'm sure. Helping, paying. He don't have to, uh, but he I, goes, I give him the money, pay for that, pay for that medical, right. do this, do that. He don't have to because look at all the wrestlers. We were just talking about that next door. Mm -hmm. Look at all the guys. Where does, it, where does it end if you start doing that? Right. Where does it end? Or how about the ones that backstab you after you stop doing it because you've done enough and of they course. Can and then they cremate and then they, you and then on, on social media, life. right? Of course, exactly. Yeah. And Vince knows that too. Yeah. You know, and, and, and as we talk, you know how many guys are in lawsuits. Yeah. Here I'm sitting sure. on a legends contract. Right. But there's guys that are out there that have tremendous names in our industry. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're not on a legends contract. Why? Because you're sitting there kicking WWE in the face. Yeah, you right. gotta make a decision. WWE is the number one company, sports entertainment company in the world, okay? Mm -hmm. There's no one compared to them. You got AEW coming out now, but I've always looked at everyone and laugh how, even Hogan, when he came out with Impact Wrestling, you remember? Yeah, yeah. sure. TNA, yeah. You remember what he did? Yeah. Okay, brother, we're going head to head, brother. It's gonna be WWE, brother. Impact Wrestling Team, we're going to take the ratings. 
They went down What's in right? the ratings. Yeah. You're going to compete with WWE, Monday Night Raw. Come yeah, on, Vince luck. has been doing wow. this for a very long. Yeah. He did not become this monstrous by company accident, yeah. overnight or by no. accident. Can Triple H carry it on, though, after Vince goes yeah, on? What's your thoughts well, on Triple H? H is definitely being trained all the way by Vince. Right. We're just talking about this next door, thinking that Vince is not in charge. He's still in charge. He's still in charge. He's still in charge. Well, I stand corrected then. No, no, I stand still in charge. charge. Completely. Oh, completely. Well, I agree. He's, he's not yep. giving the reins to yep. Stephanie. Is in, in in creative control, but he, he Triple H thinks differently than Vince, though. Yes, he does. He thinks different. For example, he loves NXT. He does. Triple H. Vince doesn't like NXT because right. he doesn't like the small Vince guys. Vince is way more it's impulsive. Not believable in my mind to him. He doesn't like the small wrestlers. Would you agree though that he's more impulsive than Triple yes, H? Yes, he, he seems to change his mind constantly, Vince. Especially of now. Of course. Nowadays. Of course. Yeah, right. of course, definitely. But yes, he's still in control. Are you concerned with his aging? He seems like he's aging like fast. Well, he's aging fast, but you just seen him. The, uh, in, well, like his, in the last his year, his age just got me. there. But I'm telling you, man, it's alarming. You me just the last seen him year. on Monday Night Raw. He he look like he hasn't slept fantastic. since he signed you. He's <laughs> built like, he's built I'm like, serious. <laughs> I mean, he had bags under his eyes to hold the roster. I was like Vince, and what's with the the lipstick on him? Because he's old. Somebody, <laughs> when you get old, you'll be wearing. Lipstick. I don't want Vince to have pink, rosy right, lips. So we got we got well, don't forget it's all entertainment now. That's true. We got, so this is true. We got about two minutes. So I'm going to name a couple okay. wrestlers, just some quick thoughts. Bret Hart. Sure. Fantastic. Excellence of execution. Unbelievable. Randy Savage. <laughs> Icon. Ted DiBiase. Greatest manager ever. Hogan. Well, I'd have to... Not the greatest wrestler, but he led what opened up the door to make it such a tremendous business. You gotta give your hats off to Hogan. All right, the last one, Tatanka. Nice. That's a good one. I've never had that one. That's a there good you go, one. Mike. A guy that can't, well, honor who he is as a Native American. When I looked at this industry from ballads, that's one of the things I thought about. Look what I can do if I can get to that stage as a Native American. And to end with that, I've had so many Native Americans to Native Americans, it wasn't Hulk Hogan. To Native Americans, it was Tatanka, because I am their own. They don't look, they look for the Native who has got off the reserve and been successful. I can't tell you how many stories I've got of Natives who were gonna commit suicide and they see me on TV and they didn't commit suicide. Get out. Natives who did not have wow. a diploma went back to school. Wow. People who lost their family, reconstructed their family, made their family successful, have kids. Why? Because he's seen another Native American on TV. If he can do it, I can do it. So that's what I've seen. Someone who could represent his people. So that's what wow. it was about. Fantastic. Nice. All right, with that, um, we're gonna call it a day. Sir, it's our pleasure that you came on to this the, our show here, and uh, what incredible stories you have. I thoroughly enjoyed this interview. Oh, thank, thank you. you. It's so awesome much. to be on the Monty and Farrow show. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Anytime I'm here, would love to hook up with you guys. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Thank, thank you. you very much. So for your love of the industry, too. You guys know everything. Well, thank you very much. Right? I appreciate it. So thank you it. for everything that you do. We appreciate you. All right. You want to pop on real quick? Sure. Always. Eric Sims. Always, always get uh, on air time. Look at that. Squeeze it here, sir. Of course. Always, always. Just put that mic right up to you. You know, Chris, real quick, what's it like traveling with Eric Sims? <laughs> He's tough, man. <laughs> He's tough, man. Uh, last night, I just uh, last night I just stepped out of the ring, working main event, working hard. I just got to the locker room. I'm undressing fast. Who comes around the corner, standing above me? Like, let's go. Sims, nice. Eric Sims, and I only been out of the ring about like I'm a couple a minutes. Slave, <laughs> I'm a goddamn slave driver. We, got, we stick tight to the schedule. All right, got, what do you got? What I need got? my beauty rest, you know. <laughs> what do you got going well, on, travel Eric? Travel up here. All right. So tonight we are e like, again because I can't remember shit okay, to, at that no. stage. Uh, East Coast Professional Wrestling, uh, Burke Catholic High School. That's uh, 80 Fletcher Street, Goshen, New York. That's somewhere up near Middletown, New York. Uh, Tatanka's on it. Mr. USA Tony Atlas, Jimmy Hart, uh, the East Coast Professional Wrestling uh, Organization, and if you want to see all the upcoming events with ESS Promotions and all the different talents, www.esspromotions.com, and it's no BS, 
with E S S. Beautiful. And with that, we're gonna call it a day. One favor you can do me though, if yes. you run across Puma King, beat the shit out of that guy. Puma King. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and you, you know him too. Oh, no, but you know what? It's, you brought this up. I don't know if we got time, but you brought this up. It's amazing. Some of these names you hear, you don't even know. I've never even heard of him. Don't even know who he is. Me and Jimmy Hart were just talking about this. Guys from my industry, you know their names 30 years later. Right. You walk down the airport, Tatanka, Jimmy Hart. Yeah. Right. Some of these guys now, two, three years later, you're not even going to know who they and are. And when they asked you to make a name, you didn't make it after a sneaker. Of course. Right? Exactly. There you Come go. on, man. <laughs> we're right what back to feet. <laughs> all right. This has been another episode of Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. We thank you all for joining. And until next Thursday, this yeah. is Mike Bonte. This is the Pharaoh. Have until a great day. Until Thursday. Later. <laughs>